Hello everybody, it is Jenny. This is Senior Perspective and I'm going to give you my Senior Perspective on episode number four from Sister Wives season 19. Let's do it. All right, it's 1130 at night. We just finished our live chat discussion after we watched it together live on my channel with top tier subscribers and I had planned on going to bed, but I can't. I can't. I read the synopsis of this episode and I thought, <sighs> put me to sleep. But I was wrong. Again, they delivered. It was good. Okay, so this is what the synopsis said. It said, How the Mighty Have Fallen, which is the title of the episode. Episode four. The Brown family spends Thanksgiving apart. Christine and Robin put their differences aside to visit with McKelty's newborns. Robin pushes Cody to reconcile with his kids. Then Christine reveals that she went on a promising first date. I was like, kill me now. I don't care about the date. Would have cared a lot last season. Would have been thrilled. Would have been excited. Would have been stoked. Nope. Don't care this season. We've already seen him. He's already been introduced to us. Not only did we watch two full one hour episodes on the wedding and have all these interviews with him during it and seeing interactions with him, seeing his whole family. Like, I feel like I know everything about him. But on top of it, at the one-on-ones afterwards, they bring him in and introduce him to everybody. He sits on the couch with Christine. So they're asking him questions about himself and that. We know the man already. Christine meeting him? Don't care. But I will say, she did have one line that was golden. After she went on the date, and it went really well, maybe it was a second date, I don't remember. I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, probably after the first date, she's talking to the camera about it, and she says, wow, he's a man. But anyway, we just had this date, and he's a man. He's not a guy. He's not a dude. He's a man. That was a direct dig at Cody. You know, he's in this manosphere thing, and he loves to be the man. He likes his manly friends. Gloves, trucks, trees, weightlifting, steroids. Allegedly. Allegedly. That's just based on his behavior on the show. How quick to anger he is, how intense his anger is, how he looks like he's been working out more and slimming down a little bit, and then the 99 bottles of supplements that were on his kitchen counter. That's all I'm saying. Allegedly. Also, last year's recently acquired gravelly voice like this that Cody has. And he still has. Another symptom. It all fits, is all I'm saying. Draw your own conclusions. I'm putting two and two together. But I might be wrong. Okay. So, the episode opens up at McKelty's house. Christine and Robin are both there. Okay, I'm just going to say, it was sweet. It was nice. Kelty looked great for just having a C-section a couple days before. I don't think I would have allowed cameras in a couple days after. <laughs> we do hear about Robin sleeping on the floor in the closet. Now, I was going to give her a lot, lot of shit about that, but it did kind of make sense. That way she kind of gets her own space too, so like... Why can't she just be in the room or why can't she go somewhere else? Well, it's close, so she doesn't have to walk upstairs or that. I remember how tired you are in the middle of the night when you have a newborn baby to be able to just say, here you go, <laughs> and then lay back down. It does make sense. It was a large closet, a whole mattress fit in there. And if it were me, I would have rather been in the closet than on the floor with McKelty and Tony in their bedroom, so. I disagree. You sleep in another room. I'm going to take back all the thoughts that I thought I was going to be sharing prior to watching this episode. It's disappointing. It's disappointing. A lot of you are not going to like me in this episode because I'm actually going to say positive things about Robin. I can't believe it. I know. I know. I know in the live chat I got a lot of slack. <laughs> and I deserved it. But one, when she was there at the house, she had no makeup on. Her hair was just hanging down. She looked lovely. She makes herself look 20 years older by packing on all that makeup that she does and makes the big bouffant hairdo with the big curls and that. When it was just hanging straight down, she had no makeup on. Honest to goodness, she looked great. Are you feeling okay? 
And again, there was another picture of her in the car getting ready to drive back. I'm gonna talk about that for a second. So she's getting ready to drive back to Flagstaff and she had makeup on, but just a little. Not the whole crazy Cruella DeVille stuff. She looked like, actually like refreshed. <laughs> I don't know. You need to lay down. Okay, let's go on. Oh, I said I was gonna talk about her in the car. Let's just talk for a second about the fact that Robin was gone for a week from the tenders. Hmm. So she can leave them and everything's okay, but Cody can't? Confused. He was lying. He was lying about that, too. So now we're going to get to the part about Thanksgiving, which I thought was going to be the only good part of the show. Ended up not being <laughs> the better part of the show, although it was kind of sweet. Okay, so we have three different locations for Thanksgiving. We don't see North Carolina with Maddie and her family. We have Flagstaff with Cody, Robin, and the kids. No Dayton. We have Salt Lake City, which... Earlier in the episode, Christine said it was McKelty's turn to host Thanksgiving. So she was going to McKelty's house to make all the food for Thanksgiving. So they were going to go there. That would have been Christine's family. And then Logan and Michelle have just bought a new house. So they were going to be hosting Thanksgiving as well. Now, see, in the last episode, didn't you think that Christine was going to be going when she was talking to... She's all excited that Janelle was going to be going to Logan's house I thought the whole family was going to go there, but apparently not. Okay, so Janelle's family all went to Las Vegas to Logan and Michelle's house, but Peyton went as well because Peyton's so close with the boys. He decided to go and hang out with the boys for Thanksgiving. Christine was fine with it. Christine's fine with everything. <laughs> I don't I, It's hard to tell when she really means things and when she doesn't. She was also fine that Robin was there with McKelty after the baby was born. Really? I mean, maybe. Everything is fine. We'll see five or 10 years down the road when we get the tell-all what she really felt about everything. Oh, I have to say, actually, we did have a fourth location, again in Flagstaff, and that was Mary. Mary was invited by Robin. I don't know if Cody knows about this, but was invited by Robin to go over to their house. Mary's like, Cody's made it very clear he doesn't like it when I'm around. Our relationship is over. And he can't be intimate with you if I'm there. That's just weird. Like, he needs to be touchy-feely. And then we get a talking head interview with him, too, where he talks about, finally, the first Thanksgiving where he can express himself to Rob. The blood comes to my loins. He's a 12-year-old boy. He is just over, 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 overselling this narrative that he cannot live without touching Robin at all times. He doesn't. He just says that. We weren't acting like a married couple with Mary in our presence. That's mostly on Robin. To be fair, that's because Robin is very sensitive to other people. I'm not. I'm not. She wants to be very careful about their feelings. I, I, don't, I don't follow. I don't, I don't I don't get it. So when Mary's there with us at our Thanksgiving, I, I'm not close with Mary, and now I'm no longer close with Robin because Mary's present, and Robin wants to be sensitive to Mary. I just don't understand. They had a normal Thanksgiving. He cut the turkey. They weren't near each other. He didn't touch her. Whatevs. Mary didn't go. She was going to go to California. Those plans fell through, so she ended up staying in Flagstaff. I felt really bad for her, actually. I'm guessing her best friend Jen went to like Jen's husband's family's house or something like that, maybe in another state. I don't know what fell through in California, but she was alone. However, she got very sick, so she spent the whole day in bed anyway. So even if she would have had plans to go somewhere else, she sounded terrible. I don't think she would have been able to. There's no way with that cold robin would have let her go into the house with the little tenders there because they would have gotten sick and she wouldn't have wanted to drive all the way to california feeling like that all worked out for the best but it still broke my heart that she kind of had nobody i don't know what the situation was with audrey and leon i don't know why they didn't come down or why she didn't go up to see them i i don't know it's thanksgiving people come on leon and audrey so in salt lake city 
at McKelty's house, I think. There's Aspen and Mitch and Isabel and Gwen and Bea, Gwen's... I don't know if she was engaged to her at that point or not, but soon to be wife, of whom Christine made a point to say she loves and they're delightful together and she would be fully in support of them getting married. So Gwendolyn came into town with her girlfriend, Bia. Uh, Gwendolyn and Bia together are adorable. They're a cute couple. They're really cute. If they wanted to get married, I'd be fine with it. Just saying, I'd be fine. Very curious this season to see where the breakdown happened. Something really significant had to have happened to have Gwen not attend her mother's wedding. We don't see this episode, though. Who else was there? Of course, McKelty, truly, Tony, and Tony's family. So his parents were there, his sisters were there. So it was a nice big Thanksgiving over there. We have an unfortunate line coming up now. We know how often Cody has to use the word experience. Well, now it's bled over onto Robin. We're having a nice time, but I miss the family. I miss the big experience. All right, so now we have Cody talking about how he's really sort of upset how Thanksgiving has worked out, how it's the first time it's just been their nucleus family, so there's only seven of them. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I guess Dayton was there. He managed to completely stay off camera. So Cody starts to explain that it was small, it wasn't the same, he missed the family, and he quickly turns it into a positive. <laughs> I'm struggling, it feels like something's missing, this is small, it's safe. <laughs> Boom. I'm like, did I miss something? Are you good? I'm really struggling in many ways that it still feels like something's missing. This is small, there's just seven of us it's quiet it feels safe so what does he mean by safe you can probably guess but here you go by safe i simply mean that we are all in a state of respect with each other respect so apparently he's trying to indicate that if the whole family got together there'd be no respect and it wouldn't be safe and herein lies the problem he has created a narrative in his head of how things will go, and therefore he refuses to do the work to get the family back together. He's not being the patriarch. He's not even being the man. He's being a wuss. Weak. Lame. He won't do the work. Let's go on and talk about safe a little bit more, can we? This is a buzzword that all the family members use sporadically had to have been the vocabulary word of the day on his little desk calendar because now we're going to use it a lot. It's quiet, it feels safe. 10 years ago, I was safe for everybody, but they weren't safe for each other. Boy, this man can perseverate on a word. By the third or fourth time you've used it within a one to two minute period of time, now you just look like you have a very weak lexicon and can only speak at an elementary level. If the word works in this situation, maybe if I say it two or three more times, it'll work better-ish. Safe, 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 safe. Nothing safe. Used to be safe, then it wasn't safe. Don't know if it was safe. Let's move on. Please. Okay, we get a little bit of introspection on Cody's part. It's sort of sad. He says, I want the other children in my life, but I don't know how to do that. I, we see later on in this episode that Robin is basically telling him what to do and he's refusing to do it because he's so stubborn. So I take that back. There's no introspection. Move on. Next. All right. Just to reiterate, in case you haven't seen some of the other ones, this is the pattern of Cody. He gets in a fight with somebody. He picks up and leaves. So if he doesn't get along with the wife, off he goes to the next wife's house. I'll see you in another four days when I make it back around. At which point that wife is over it because she can choose to be in a fight with him during the little bit of time they have together, or she can just suck it up and be the dutiful wife and be sweet and nice to him because she knows after this day she's not going to see him for four more days. Cody has never learned to work through problems. He's never learned to address difficult situations. And he's certainly never learned to get the vocabulary to properly talk through and work through difficult topics 
with the OG3 or his OG13 kids. I would venture to say he does a little bit with Robin in her home. Do you really think that? But if that does happen, it doesn't transfer. Can't transfer to other situations. So what good is a skill that's kept in isolation in a jar? So here we go. Cody figuring, yeah, if enough time goes by, eventually we'll be back together again, right? But he looks so confused. When he talks, this is something that I noticed on Sunday night we were talking about this. I'll put some clips in here for you to see. When he talks about trying to make amends with his kids and what he might need to do to see to it that that happens, he's so confused. He just, he looks, it almost looks painful to him. Like, what? Confused. He looks like somebody is speaking a completely different language to him. Huh? Here we go. This is the first time I ever remember a situation like this happening. And I would think it's because there's a new production company, but I don't know if there's a new production company. Is there? <laughs> I know Puddle Monkey's been doing it for the longest time. And Puddle Monkey works in conjunction with the other major company that works for TLC. So Puddle Monkey's just the two guys. I heard they had been fired. Let me know if you have any details on that. What, what is the name of the other production company, if that's true? Look it up for me. <laughs> it's probably somewhere online. I just Googled online just basic stuff and looked at Wikipedia. It still has Puddle Monkey listed. So we see just words and it says, shortly before the cameras arrived, Cody and Robin had a heated exchange, hmm. giving us a little behind the scene information. And then it says, before tensions could escalate, wait, what do you think Cody did? Yes, Cody went for a drive. Cody left, but here's the kicker. Cody had no wife's house to go to. <laughs> he had nowhere to go. He and Mary are on the outs. She wouldn't come over for Thanksgiving. He and Janelle are separated. He and Christine are divorced. He drove and drove and drove in circles and then had to come right back home to Robin and work through his problems. Now, Cody explains a situation that earlier in the day, he and Robin got into a conversation. Is that what you call it? Earlier this morning, Robin and I got into a conversation after we got the kids to school. Hmm, who's lying? The production company or Cody? What do you think? All right, so Cody comes back. We know that the fight was between Cody and Robin because Robin was pushing him to reach out to the kids some more to try to fix the relationship between them. We do get a little bit of Robin talking about her original bio dad who left her when I believe she was young, officially divorced Alice when she when Robin was around seven, but we believe he left when she was like around two years of age. But Robin did say that she would see him every now and then. He really wasn't a father figure. He had another wife. He lived with her. That was his family and didn't have much time for Robin. You know, they say that when you grow up, you marry your father. So according to Robin, because of that experience, she is trying to get Cody to reach out and mend the relationships with the kids. Okay, again, see, this is where I'm like, yes, Rob, she's doing the right thing. Now, did she go about it all right? No. Did she say some bad things? Yes. Was she off on some things? Absolutely. <laughs> this by no means is a complete pass for Robin but at least it's the first time we're seeing her challenge Cody. Haven't seen it before. She always has his back, always has his back. I was putting clips together today about that. Always has Cody's back. She didn't have his back today. She told him he needs to step up. It would have been great if she said man up. Be a man. But she didn't. I mean, she knows better. Maybe she did. Maybe that's why he drove away. So here we go. It's a whole scene of Cody taking no responsibility for the relationship that he has with his children. He keeps insisting that the kids don't like him because he 
fell out of love with their moms. Nice guess, but wrongo. It's all about Christine and Janelle. Nothing to do with him. In fact, he's the victim. It's not his fault he fell out of love with them. Why are the kids giving him such a hard time? He doesn't understand. There's no mention about his part in, oh, we find out that at the wedding, what? Maddie saw to it that her kids did not go around Cody. Why? Because apparently little Evie's three years old and Cody has never gone to see her. That can't be true. Cody has never gone to see Evie in three years. And later on, he complains it's their fault because they moved so far away. You're kidding. My daughter doesn't even have grandkids yet. And I go and drive eight hours to visit her three or four times a year. I can't. I can't. My son in college, I just drove up this weekend two hours to pick him up and take him to lunch. <laughs> and then I drove two hours up. No, I didn't. We went to Walmart and he got a bunch of stuff that he needed. <laughs> Mom and the credit card were there. Stocked him up with things that he needed. And then I dropped him off back at his apartment and I drove two hours back home. It was delightful. It was a pleasure. I was looking forward to it. I had a lot to do this weekend, and yet I just thought, mm, wipe it out of your mind, Jenny. You're just gonna be in the car, listen to some podcasts, listen to some music for four hours of driving, and enjoy your time with your son. This is a concept Cody doesn't get. He does not understand sacrifice. He's mad at Maddie and Caleb for leaving him. It's not his fault. He hasn't seen his grandkid in three years. And then it comes out, he didn't even know Maddie was pregnant again. Well, it makes sense. Maddie has cut him off because he refuses to be consistent. He refuses to show up. He refuses to be a grandparent. And she thinks it's just going to be confusing to the kids to have this random man come in their face and be like, Hola, wanna dance? Wanna samba? Hola, mi bambina. Uh... La samba? Wanna dance? Wanna dance? Yeah. That's gonna be your... <laughs> uh, strange world. Yeah, creepy. I don't blame Maddie. All right, I'm all over the place here. Focus, focus, focus. You can tell, I, you know, Cody hates therapy. So I don't think he's in therapy. I think Robin's had a lot of therapy. She claims she didn't like that therapy session, but Either she reads every self-help book on the shelf or she's in therapy. Her use of safe all the time. This is how the dialogue went between them. Apparently, huge fight, screaming, fighting, angry to the point that Cody leaves, jumps in his truck, drives away. So he comes back and what does Robin say? Here's our She-Ra doll, if you're not familiar with She-Ra. She-Ra is the alter ego that Robin talks about in the book that she gave herself in difficult situations. Although, She-Ra is a real cartoon character. <laughs> Although she spells it different. In the book, she spells it She-Ra, like she's a cheerleader. Anyway, I found myself a little She-Ra doll. And she says when Cody comes back, Oh, hi, Cody. I'm glad you're back. How are you feeling? He jumped in a truck and he left your ass. Okay, she's being nice. Hey. Hi. How you doing? Good. Cody says, uh, I'm a little emotional. With his hoarse, raspy voice that he suddenly has had for the past two years. Allegedly. she says, Robin says, Are you at a place that we can talk about it? Are you at a place that we can talk about it? Therapy, therapy, therapy. Do you feel better? You feel a little better? Well, I'm a little emotional. Yeah, it's a trigger point for me. Trigger. Wait. Cody is going to bounce around and use trigger now in this conversation like he was using safe in the last one. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Like Tigger. Here we go. Follow the bouncing Tigger as he keeps saying trigger. Cody starts off. You think he's going to take responsibility, but I mean, come on. It's Cody. I'm tired of being angry. I'm tired of being angry. She-Ra. 
I know. I'm tired of being betrayed. Oh, betrayal. Another buzzword. We have to slide one of his other favorite words in there. Betrayal. And then we get a flat out lie from him. And I'm just not, I'm not gonna dwell on this, but if one more time he insists that his time was equal, but he'll say it differently. So he says, well, the kids will come to him and say, I'm just frustrated with how everything went and you were never at our house. I felt like we didn't get equal time. And he says, I was at your house. Well, yeah, at some point, he'll say words that are like, well, okay. I'm sorry, I had four wives. I was at your house though. It's, it's a manipulation gaslighting thing to imply to the audience that he was there. I'm going to say it out here on camera. I was at their house. Well, of course you were at their house at some point. But it's been very clear from all the wives that if it was a Christine or Janelle day, because really since the series started, he pretty much kicked Mary to the curb. If it's a Christine or Janelle day, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 to 7 p.m. At night, in the dark, he arrives at their house. Well, in the dark in the wintertime. That's him saying, I was there on my day. I did my schedule. Equality. Now feed me so I can get to sleep because I got to get up early in the morning and get over to Robin's house before the kids get up so I can help get them dressed and then give them breakfast. Every day of the week. Oh, makes me so angry when he insists that he spent equal amount of time with them. And I was there. Of course, of course you were there. Nobody said you were never there. Oh. Okay. Moving on so much animosity from some of my family there's there's a couple of my kids wouldn't even engage me at the wedding some of them a couple of my kids wouldn't engage me awkward language you mean a couple of your kids wouldn't speak to you or even engage with you which is still awkward but okay cody has not seen evie since she was born and there's no words cody has not been there since evie was born and evie's three and a half and she didn't want him to just drop in and like be like, oh, I'm your grandpa. And then be like, what? Who is this guy? Like, you know what I mean? And he's mad at her. You didn't show up for three and a half years. Just look how appalled he is at the thought that in the past three and a half years, he was supposed to go see Evie. Watch. It's unrealistic expectation for grandparents to be in their grandchildren's lives all the time, especially if you move your children to an to entirely different coast. It is unrealistic for you to expect grandparents to be involved in your child. Of course, they'll say things like, it's unrealistic to expect that they're going to be there all the time. I don't think Maddie expected you to be there all the time, Cody. Maybe one out of 365 days, not all the time. What are you doing, Cody? What are you doing that you can't go there? Oh, here. I have work and a life in Flagstaff. Work. Uh, what? What kind of work? He's got no work. It's a joke of work. Even his wives have said, I don't, I, nobody knows what he does. He just drives around. <laughs> Literally, Janelle and Christine both said that on separate occasions. I, we, nobody knows what he does. He gets in the car and drives around. Apparently he sells paraphernalia affiliated with firearms. That's a hobby. That's something for him to stay connected with his manosphere, with his man friends. It's not a job. And a life. Mm. Translation. Robin and her kids are in Flagstaff. I cannot leave them to go see my grandchild. How dare you even ask me? I have my wife, my two kids, their nanny, my two 20-year-old daughters, and my 20-something-year-old son that need me here. I can't be there for you, my biological daughter, or my grandchild. You don't need me. Grown children here need me. That makes no sense. And here's some delusion coming up again. Cody doesn't understand what he's done wrong in any of these relationships. He thinks his kids are purposefully trying to hurt him for leaving their moms, of which the moms left him. 
So it makes no sense. But he can't take responsibility for his part of it, so he has to deflect. It has to be somebody else's fault. Okay, it's the kid's fault for misunderstanding what's going on. And it's the wife's fault because they're no longer with me. Mm. My hands are clean. They're, they're purposefully leaving me out of their lives to punish me for a crime I did not commit. I am only guilty of not falling madly in love with their mothers. Oh, please, I can't even with this man. Well, Madison actually called Janelle, saying Dad said he didn't love you. <laughs> That's true. You said it. Every time I talk to her, she spreads gossip about me to the rest of the family. That's not gossip, it's news. Facts! I, I never said that I didn't love Janelle. On the contrary, I actually said that I loved Janelle. This is some rumor that was created in the family that just sowed division. Robin is still saying, fix that relationship with Marianne, fix that relationship with your kids, and fix that relationship with Janelle. And I'm like, well, listen, when, I, when I'm around them, it's, there's, there's no flicker, there's no flame. I don't know what to do here. So it's been weird because I'm married to the love of my life. I've got these other situations at different levels of, of discord. I'm pretty sure that's not love. Cody again, blaming Maddie for gossiping. It's her family. <laughs> Gossip is is generally spreading information that is not really true. That's really what makes it become gossip. It can be true too and sensational, but generally, okay, what is the definition? I'm looking it up, here we go, here we go. Cody thinks when he talks to one daughter about the family and they share with other family members about it that they are gossiping. Here we go. It is casual or unconstrained conversation or reports about other people, typically involving details that are not confirmed to be true. Case closed. Cody, if you share something that's true and that person tells somebody else in your family, in your family, it can't be gossip if it's true. It's only gossip if you have a secret that you're trying to keep from somebody else. Is that what's going on, Cody? Bingo. Do you have different stories with different people? And so you're upset that when you talk to one person, if they talk to somebody else, they're gonna realize, well, that's not the same story. Maybe. And instead of getting caught in his web of lies, deflection again. It's their fault, their gossips doesn't matter that what I'm saying is untrue here and doesn't match the story here. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Our family was killed by gossip. I think this episode shows Cody at one of his most heightened states of delusion, which is a shocking thing to say because we've seen a lot of delusional behavior. So you're trying to say, Cody, that you said things to Maddie that couldn't be said to other people. Who's the gossip then? You're sharing with one family member something that they can't share with another family member? Mm, who would be the gossip? And then Janelle comes out and says, well, my goodness, I'll prove to you that he's the gossip. He told me things about Mary and Christine that he shouldn't have told me. <laughs> A little bit of advice here for you, Cody. If you're gonna lie or tell information that everybody can't know, zip it. Something's wrong with that piece of information if it can't be openly shared with everybody. Keep it to yourself. But he is as big of a gossip. He'd always say that Mary was difficult or Christine was whatever. Like he would always say things like that to me about Mary and Christine. Cody said that he is willing to contact and work with and love the children. Conditional. Who will allow him to do that? And in time, maybe the other ones who he's at odds with might just come back magically. And, and in time, maybe the rest of them will come back around. And everyone will forget everything that Cody has said and done. All the hurt he said, all the mean things he said about their mother, and everybody will come back and they'll be in fellowship again. Kumbaya.
Kumbaya, my lord. I've never heard the term fellowship being used with a family, but maybe it is. Let me know if you use it with your family. In my world, the term fellowship is used with other people, outsiders, neighbors, friends, colleagues, getting together socially, fellowshipping together. When it's your family, I don't see it as fellowship. It, it's family. It's just, it's a whole nother level. Maybe I should look that word up too. Here we go, fellowship. A friendly association, especially with people who might share one's interest. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a family member. A second definition, the condition or relation of being a companion or a peer. Again, this isn't your family. Stop saying fellowship with your family. All right. Case closed. Proof. I looked it up. I'm using it right. You're using it wrong. <laughs> Cody's dragging me down to his level of maturity. Pull yourself together. Let's move on. All right, so we have a lot of banter back and forth. I'm going to try to insert as much of it as I can without getting a strike. Basically, we have Robin, she -Ra, and Robin is saying, your kids need you. Your family needs you. You need to keep reaching out. Just one time is not enough. You're the parent. You're the adult. To which he says, they're adults. And she has to correct him. You're the parent. He forgets that. I'm not abandoning my children. They have betrayed me. Would you please stop saying that? But they're kids and they're trying no, to- No, they're adults. They're your kids, though. I know. They're your kids, though. I know. Do you? I do not want to talk to a person who sits there with anima with with they so much point. contempt. They need you. They can have me. They just don't need to treat me like crap. Oh, it's just maddening listening to this. We were all pulling our hair out watching it live. Back and forth, back and forth. Reach out to your kids. They need you. They're rotten. They have to come to me. I did it once. Not going to do it again. Bah. Shockingly, Robin is right. For that thou shalt be punished. Now, we have a classic narcissistic moment where Cody decides to actually flip it on Robin. You can tell he's had enough of the cameras watching her tell him that he has work to do to mend these relationships. So he decides to say, you know, I think this is all about your dad. This is how he abandoned you. And this is something you need to work through. This isn't about me. Distracting, gaslighting. He's the king of it all. You know anybody who's gone through three divorces in... No. I, the fact like really you're... kind of almost one or two years. No. One or two years? Oh, three divorces in three years. Because of your actions, Cody, just say, to be clear. These didn't like come out of the blue. These weren't unprovoked. These are three women that you don't want anything to do with, but you're the victim. All right, just wanted to get it straight. I'm not looking but, for your pity. I'm looking for I'm understanding, not, No, I'm, I am. I am, don't but you? But you're losing respect for me. Because it just... Is that from your own experience with your father? I mean, I have not betrayed these kids. All right, so there's a golden opportunity that comes up where Cody literally asks Robin, Robin, do you know something that I did wrong besides not falling in love with their mothers? Of which he just said earlier that his kids were upset that he said that he didn't love their mom and he said he never said that. But now Cody's saying <laughs> he didn't love her. I mean... You're making my brain hurt. And this is the same conversation. This is all within a five minute period of time. I, I never said that I didn't love Janelle. On the contrary, I actually said that I loved Janelle. This is some rumor that was created in the family that just sowed division. I'm gonna accuse my kids of lying and say I never said that and then I'm gonna turn around and double down and say it again. <laughs> you know something I did wrong besides not falling madly in love with their well, mothers. Wait, what did, what did you say? You know of something I did wrong, besides not falling madly in love with their well, mothers. every, okay, I'm sorry, but there's two sides to all of it, okay? What are you complaining about? I just loved her and I didn't love your mother, okay? So there's the guilt. The guilt lies there. Come again? I, I never said that I didn't love Janelle. On the contrary, I actually said that I loved Janelle. 
This is some rumor that was created in the family that just sowed division. Where did that come from? I just loved her and I didn't love your mother, okay? So there's the guilt. The guilt lies there. Case closed. So then, Cody not knowing how to handle the situation decides, hmm, all right. I've already blamed Robin and said that, oh, this is probably about your past. You need to work through that in therapy. Let me take it from another angle. I'm just defending you, Robin. I'm not getting along with them because they're blaming you. This is all about that. I'm defending your honor. I'm the hero here. Every one of those kids who has shut me out is blaming me for what happened or you. What? So what I do, just say, oh, okay, you can no, call Robin they... whatever you want. Okay, there's good and bad in this from Robin. If I were him, I would be calling, emailing, texting, maybe showing up, flying out there, you know, whatever. Totally agree. She's right. That's what he should be doing. Now, she said if it was me, that's what I would be doing. I don't know. I mean, the dynamic in that family is weird, but like, I'm not sure how much Robin is doing on her end to reach out. Gabe had to approach her at the wedding. She talked about the kids that came up to her and gave her hugs. And she said, Gabe is the one that said, I love you. Now, any child that walked up to her and gave her a hug, first thing out of her mouth should have been, I love you. If she felt uncomfortable walking up to them, maybe initially, that's fine. I still, I, I don't get it. There's no reason why you can't just go up and say hi to somebody. But when the kids take the initiative and they come up to you and they give you hugs and say hello, you should have been saying I love you to all of them, Robin. All of them. Missed opportunity. Now you're kind of gaslighting and blaming him for everything, but you know, you have a part of this too. Okay, his is like 84%. <laughs> what does that leave? 16% left, 16%, 16% shares, Robin, but you still, you're culpable, Robin, you're culpable for 16%. If he's too stubborn to get on the phone or get on a plane, you go. You know, there's no way on God's green earth he was going to let her fly over without him going to. He would have been there with her. If she wanted him to go, she should have booked the ticket. If the 20 year olds can't watch the 10 and 12 year olds, then fine. Take the little ones along with you. You guys have enough money. You can afford to fly for the weekend and see your kids and grandkids, both to blame. Where this hate for Robin came from, I don't know, but it's like, if I can't protect her from it, I'm just not gonna engage it. She never did anything to you. Once again, if I can't protect Robin from the kids not liking her, I'm just not gonna engage in it. I'm gonna cut off those kids because my fourth wife is more important than my biological children. Let's marinate on that for a minute. Priorities, Cody. And it's disingenuous to say that Robin didn't do anything to them because one of their major complaints is the fact they didn't get access to and see Cody very often. And this takes us all the way back to the fact that he spent all day at Robin's house. I mean, for sure. Um, he came over kind of on his normal schedule, but you know, he never came till seven, six thirty-seven, And then he would always have to leave in the morning to help get Sol and I ready for school. I'm gonna say, I don't remember a time ever where Cody left Robin's house to come over to my house to help get my kids off to school. I just think it's disgusting. You would leave one wife's home to go help the other kid, the other wife's kids get ready for school. What, can't she help get her kids ready for school when he's not there so he can spend more time with the wife where he's at? Lehi Logan was getting my kids ready to go out the door to school. I don't know where Cody was. I was actually taking Ariella and Solomon to school because I liked it. Even if their day was a Saturday or Sunday, now Robin, allowed this. She's keeping you from them. Of course the kids are going to think it's her idea and that she wanted to do it and that he's just the puppy dog that followed along, using more puppy dog analogy since he likes them. This is a time that he <laughs> is the puppy dog. Yes, Robin. Yes. You want me there early in the morning? I'll be there. At six o'clock at night, time for me to go to another house. Oh, Ari's stuck to my leg. Can you take her off? No? I need to give her five or ten more minutes? Okay. You're culpable too, Robin. The two of you together. The worst. 
we have Cody confirming that he just spent a year lamenting the situation that he's estranged from his kids, doing nothing about it, lamenting. Okay, so I've spent a year here just lamenting the situation. When I get over that, those children who are open to me will get my attention. So Cody goes on to say, okay, I know I know, I spent a year lamenting this, but when I get over that, he's not done. It's been a year. He spent a year lamenting, but he's not done yet. How long do you think this is going to last? So when I decide to get over that, the kids that are left there that are open to me, they'll get my attention. I'll give them my attention. You lucky dogs. I will grant them and grace them. The rest of them want nothing to do with them. Robin keeps trying, God bless her. Well, don't you think you could do a little bit of communication? Cody starts to get very confused. At like, the wedding. Just to let him know it's open? I have tried you, to have connect you been, with Have Madison. you been trying to communicate with them? Gabriel, yes, I have. She's pushing for him to take some level of responsibility and to reach out to the kids, and he's just not getting it. Again, it's like she's speaking a foreign language. What did I do to deserve this? Like, what did I do wrong? Say what? The only thing the kids are upset with him is the way he has treated his family, the way he has completely, like, ditched out. Divorce the is total, hard on kids. Yeah, Separation but it's a total betrayal. Hard. It's not about the divorce. I'm not even talking about their mothers. Betrayal. Cody not understanding what Robin's saying. Robin's saying the wrong stuff now. I feel like she's backpedaling because she thinks he's going to lose it. And she knows the cameras are there. So now she's like, hmm, she decides to throw the other moms under the bus that maybe the other moms were feeding your kids erroneous information. So go reach out to them. It's not their fault. They're getting fed information that is not true or is one-sided. Well, then they could be mad at their mother. It's Christine and Janelle's fault. Ugh, I am so ready to get off this merry-go-round. He's heard nothing, nothing, nothing. He's not heard one word she said. We're right back at square one. My kids can have all my attention. All they have to do is come to me. I will not reach out. They need you in their life. They can have me. All they have to do is pick up the phone and call. All they have to do is answer when I call without having total contempt for me. And then he says, all I have to do is answer when I call, as if he's calling all of them and he's getting no response but he throws on a tag at the end. All they have to do is answer when I call without contempt for me. Oh, so they do answer your phone calls, Cody. They answer your phone calls, but they're still hurt from what you've done. Therefore, you're not gonna call them again. You're not gonna work through it on the phone. You're not gonna apologize a word you don't know Gosh, wouldn't it be great if that showed up on the word of the day calendar? Apologize. Well, that's not going to happen. Father of the year. Oh, another favorite word we're jumping back to now. Regressing to seventh grade. Here we go. This argument, this disparity in relationship with my children is specifically, in my mind, because of talk. Cody now trying to explain. There's so many pauses in this part because he's not sure what he's saying. So it's word salad time. Well, blame dad. Dad screwed up. Right. I did screw up. I gave up. I gave up on love because it wasn't enough love. And I'm pretty sure they're going to say that's dad's fault and well it, you can blame me and i'm fine just don't bring contempt to our conversation wait what what disjointed word salad oh goodness cody says don't worry about it i'm gonna forgive them eventually i think not sure Listen, when the time is ripe, I'll finally feel forgiving. I think, I hope. 
Robin says, you need to get there. Since you have no idea how to do this, possibly, maybe, get on your knees and just pray? Cody's answer? Because I know but it takes that... more than just that. It's going to take a change of heart with me. Yeah, that's, that's good, but, like, <laughs> that's not going to do it. That's not enough. You think God can solve problems? <laughs> have you met me? I'm Cody Brown. We're not gonna involve God in this. We've got this brain going for us. I'm the codester. I'm the codester. I can figure it out, solve it on my own. I don't need God. The arrogance of this man. And kind of blasphemy when you think about it. I mean, I have not betrayed these kids. I have not betrayed these kids. I won't speak to them. I won't go see my granddaughter for three and a half years. I won't call them. I won't apologize. I won't be contrite. I won't humble myself. But I didn't betray them. Hmm. I'd love to know his definition of betray. He uses betrayal a lot. Had have been one of the definitions on his word of the day calendar. Maybe his word of the day calendar doesn't have definitions on it. Maybe it's just a word. And he's like, that's a cool sounding word. Betrayal. Betrayal. Betray betrayal. 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 Yeah, I'm going to use that word today. The kids who are mad at me get together. And they're all colluding. To, not all. But they're colluding okay. against me. Okay. It's a betrayal. Betrayal. Again. Betrayal. All right, we have a moment of... I thought Robin breaking through, Robin speaking truth here, Cody going, mm -hmm. I can understand that my kids also are hurt and broken because their family has broken up too, not just mine. I mean, this isn't just about me, is it? And I can forgive them for that. Oh, Lordy. I Listen, they're hurting. They, their whole family is in pieces and they don't know how it's going to turn out. That's got to be hard for them. Don't you see that? Oh, I, I, I see that. And, and I, it's I can really be forgiving tough. of it completely, and Robin. It's tough. Forgive what? What are you forgiving? Oh, move on. <laughs> yes, please. Shockingly. We have a moment now of Cody truly recognizing two things he's done, two, not just one, but two things that he did wrong during the COVID period of time. Now, let me count the ways. There's a bunch. But really, the two main ones, he made his boys move out when they were 18. And two, he didn't go to New York with Isabel for her surgery. That's a big one. They're both big ones. In COVID. There's two huge mistakes I probably made. Probably. Wanted the boys to move out because they couldn't comply to the COVID rules. That just became sort of a foolish power game. And one of those mistakes was also not going to Isabel's surgery. And that put some bad blood between a bunch of us. That's huge. I mean, there's no follow-up, like, and because of that, I'm going to take extra steps to make things right and better, but you know. Step one was taken, acknowledging that there is a problem and that you were the problem. With plural marriage, it's very difficult for a dad to get one-on-one -on -one time with kids. He has to be really, really present, but then at the same time, it's still difficult just because of math. It's very difficult because of math. I'm sorry. I want my value of the property. And I'd like to recoup some of the money I put into Robin's house. When Janelle's bringing up, oh, that Cody and I owe her something, it's like, how do you, how do you calculate? How do you figure that out? It's so confusing. Robin said she took calculus in college. We can't figure out when Janelle sold her house and gave the proceeds to Robin, we can't figure out what Robin owes Janelle back. Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? Why is this so difficult? Who's going to be able to figure that out? <laughs> Math and Robin is funny. And then Cody sees the light. You are trying. I, I don't try enough. I know that. But... 
That's because it's not safe to go there. And I'm triggering like crazy. Oh, triggering. Triggering. I know you're going through. I don't want to trigger while I'm in a conversation with them. Trigger. The wonderful thing about triggers, our triggers are wonderful things. Their tops are made out of rubber, their bottoms are made out of springs. They're bouncy, 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 fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about triggers is I am the only one. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Not the only one. Just keep watching. We're going to get another trigger. I'm so angry about what has happened that if I talk to my kids, I'm worried that they'll trigger me with an accusation. Trigger. Really, I'll be honest with you. I don't have the bandwidth yet to go to God in gratitude and try and fill my love tank with the Spirit of God. I'm just bitter right now. He doesn't have the bandwidth to go to God and get his love tank filled. I think we're using love tank inappropriately in this situation. And we're using bandwidth incorrectly. Cody's going to try to change the conversation again on Robin. And now, as she's saying, just promise me you're going to make amends with your kids. You're going to try. You're going to keep reaching out. Cody makes it seem like there's an either or situation here. He says, you and I aren't doing good right now, which she agrees to. I really feel like I need to put my energy into us, into you and me here. He's deflecting. Hmm. Okay. I guess Cody doesn't have the bandwidth to work on more than one relationship at a time. Yet, he decided to father 15 children. Can't address the needs of anyone but one at a time. My heart is broken when I'm sitting here with the person that I love the most in the world. Ow! And my heart's still broken. What do I do with that? Your children are watching this, Cody. Don't say that wife number four is the person that you love the most in the world. Just, come on. Not cool. Gosh, it's not right. Do better. Some people think that parental child relationships shouldn't, don't have to be reciprocal, but when they're adults, yeah, they do. Lies. I disagree. Disagree. It's still your child. You still reach out. You're still the parent. So parent them, Cody. Simple. His ego prevents it. I'm not going to reach out forever. Mm. I would. It's where we're different. But because I would is why I'm not in that situation. Robin wants him to promise to keep on trying. Literal tears. Fake tear Robin has an actual tear on her cheek. She's grabbing his collar, shaking him and saying, promise me you will keep trying. Promise me you will reach out to them. And Cody says, okay, I promise. A little bit. <laughs> promise me you'll keep trying at least a little bit until you're ready. Promise me. Okay, a little bit. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen somebody so stubborn in my life. These are words I haven't said in 14 years, and I probably won't say again in another 14 years. We're going to end this episode with Robin speaking words of wisdom. I know. Let it be. They need him to try harder. It's, it's his role. He's dad. I don't think he realizes how important that is. He just doesn't grasp how important a dad is to a child. I thought it was going to be a dud of an episode. Mm -mm, not a dud. Not a dud. Let's look and see what we've got coming up next week. It says, Mary asks the church for a release from her marriage to Cody. Oh, that might be good. Mm. Gabe opens up to Janelle about his relationship with his father. Oh, that might be good too. Christine is excited for her second date with David. Yeah. Okay. McKelty reveals she ate her placenta. Oh, really don't care. Please. Okay, fast forward. And then Robin is left in tears on Christmas.
I'm sure by next week I'll be back to Robin, it's all your fault. <laughs> Come back to us. All right. I know this is not like me. I have folders of videos ready to go that are all about how horrible Robin is. But I gotta call a spade a spade and a duck a duck. In this episode, Robin was spitting facts. Kinda. And if I'm not honest about it, then you can't believe me when I say other things. I don't want you to think I'm just bashing her for the sake of bashing her. It's not who I am. I honestly really don't even enjoy bashing Cody and Robin. I don't. I'd rather this be a more flowery channel. But it's simply not possible because of the content that they're giving us and I'm reacting to it. So if they do something right, I have to acknowledge it. And I am shocked to say that I probably could count on more than one hand how many right things Robin said in this episode. I know! Who are you? It's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. All right, I'll be back next week. Well, let's talk about it some more. You know what? You can just come at me on Tuesday night. Tuesday night, we're going to be talking about this live, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope you're there. Don't miss it. Take care. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye.